Hello, this is Miss Melissa with Preschool Learning Garden. This is my third lesson in my series on the theology of sin. In the first two lessons, we learned what is a sin and who is Satan. In this lesson, we're going to learn about Satan's first temptation and what is temptation. And we're going to be reading directly from the Bible, figuring out the story on Satan's first temptation. So what is a temptation? That's a very big word. Can you say it with me? Temptation. A temptation is something that entices or encourages you to do something that displeases God. Well, the very first people that Satan tried to trick and tempt was the very first man and woman that God created. Their names were Adam and Eve. Let's listen to see what happened. I'm going to be reading from the English Standard Version of the Bible. It comes from Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree of the gar in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. So God had told Adam and Eve not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the serpent knew that. The serpent is Satan. Satan knew what God had told Adam and Eve. And remember, Satan loves it when we disobey God. And he will do whatever he can to try to turn us away from God. The Bible calls him the craftiest of all the beasts. That means he's the trickiest. Well, Satan went to Eve first. He tricked her, he tempted her, and he lied to her. And the more that Eve thought about Satan's words. The more and more she kept thinking about what he said, the more she started believing the lies. Your eyes will be opened. You can be like God. The more and more she thought about it, the more she wanted to do it and to figure out for herself what was a lie and what was the truth. She didn't turn away and she didn't ask God for help either, which is what she should have done. The longer she looked at it, the better it looked and the more she wanted to do it. Has that ever happened to you? The more and more you think about something you know you shouldn't do, the more you want to do it. Well, that's a temptation. And she decided to act on that temptation. And she took the fruit and she ate it. And she gave some to Adam and he ate it too. They both disobeyed God. They both sinned and did what God said not to do. And 
there were some big consequences because of that. A consequence is something that happens as a result of an action. And something bad happened as a result of them disobeying God. Let's read the next part and see what happens. Verse 7. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. So it tells us that the first thing that they did was to try to hide and cover up what they had done. Have you ever done that? When you do something you know you shouldn't do, and then you try to hide or cover up what you've done? Well, that's what Adam and Eve did. And the next section tells us that God came looking for them and asked them what they had done. And Adam blames Eve, and Eve blames the serpent. In verses 14 through 19, God punishes each one of them individually. First, he punishes the serpent, then he punishes Eve, and then he punishes Adam. They each had a consequence for what they did. Then something else happens as a result of their sin. We're going to read about that part in verses 21 through 24. Verse 21. And the Lord God made for Adam and his wife garments of skins and clothed them. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us in knowing good and evil. Now lest he reach out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out from the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he was taken. He drove out the man and at the east of the garden of Eden he placed the cherubim and a flaming sword that turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Genesis 3, 21 through 24. So God gave them clothes to wear and then sent them out of the garden forever. And to make sure that they wouldn't go back in, he sent a cherubim to guard the way and a flaming sword to guard the tree of life. They had some big consequences for disobeying God. Well, we can learn all kinds of things from the story of Adam and Eve, but there are a few important things that I want you to remember from this story. And that's, and one of those is that sin always has consequences. And it makes God really sad and angry. And he must deal with sin. So, he will punish those that sin and there will be consequences. The next is that Satan will do all kinds of things to get us to turn away from God. He will trick us and tempt us and lie to us. But his temptations and his lies have no power without our help. The temptation alone is not the sin. The sin is when we act on it and we actually do the thing that displeases God. The Bible tells us that Satan is the father of lies. He will tell us all kinds of lies to get us to turn away from God and to question God's true words. But Jesus is the opposite of that. Jesus is the truth. And John 14, 6 tells us, I am the way 
and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. So Jesus is the truth. Satan is the father of lies, but Jesus is the truth. And we can turn to Jesus, turn to God to ask him, what is the truth and what is a lie? So whenever Satan's trying to tempt you or tell you lies, you can turn to God and ask God for help. Figuring out what is the truth and what you should do. Don't be like Eve who decided to rely on her own ideas of what was the truth and what was a lie and tried to figure it out all on her own. She didn't turn to God and ask God for help and she didn't run away. We can always ask God for help and he will help us to stand firm and turn away from Satan's lies and anything else that he tries to do to trick us and tempt us. We can stand firm on God's words. So remember, nothing good ever comes from thinking about bad things or temptations all the time, every day. That's how lies take roots in our hearts and minds. Satan may be the one who tells us the lies, but they have no power without our help. So turn away and turn to God for help. In our next lesson, we're gonna be learning more on temptation and learning some more specific ways that we can deal with temptation and help fight against Satan's temptations and his lies. Well, thank you for watching. Let's finish with a word of prayer. Get your prayer hands ready. Open, shut them, open, shut them, give a little clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them, put them in your prayer hands. Heavenly Father, thank you for who you are and that you are the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you that you give us the power to turn away from Satan's temptations and his lies. Help us to do that, God. We love you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a blessed day, and let your light shine for Jesus.